Brussels sprouts. Oh, yes. 那你要帮我一起剥吗？ Okay. 你要不要把那个椅子拿过来？纯粹的苦味大概难以下咽。如果你吃过美式水煮的包子甘蓝，一定明白我的意思。你知道，大部分的小朋友连大人都不喜欢吃这个，哎，他们觉得很苦啊。You feel like it's bitter? No. 但当它与咸香辛辣调和，不但变温和，还会很迷人。准备开饭喽！作为妈妈和厨师，最骄傲的就是孩子们爱吃我做的菜。我的先生是美国人，两个儿子混血。谢谢。他们出生后，我常在想，他们要如何找到自己，怎么看待身上二分之一的华人血统？生活在美国这个文化大熔炉中，作为妈妈，要怎么把我的文化和味觉记忆传承给他们、uh, ？Let's say if you have been traveling for a long time, you're backpacking around, and then you're coming home. What would you want me to make for you? Bacon fried rice. 文化的传承透过食物恐怕是最直接的。幸运的是，不止我一个人想过这些问题。来听听他们的故事，或许对我有所启发。我是庄祖仪，十几年来边写字边掌勺，用食物认识世界。Absolutely good. Wherever there are Chinese people, there are Chinese restaurants. 目前安居美国，我想在这里探索何谓地道中餐，美国中餐的繁荣由谁造就，又怎样讲出了华人的甜酸苦辣？请你跟我一起品尝中餐在美国逛农夫市场是我在美国很享受的一件事。来自当地当季的新鲜农产品，每回都有惊喜发现。美国的多元文化也体现在这个小小的市场中。美国大约有十分之一的人口被认为有多种族血统，也就是混血，这个比例还在不断增加。Radical Family Farms 的主人 Leslie Weiser 就是一个典型的混血。他是一个有中国、台湾、德国和波兰血统的美国人。他种亚洲蔬菜，一大部分是为了帮助两个和他一样有亚裔血统的孩子来认识自己的文化根源。Leslie 邀请我到他的农场去。这一片三英亩的土地位于北加州的索诺玛县，这里以葡萄酒庄闻名。华工曾经是农业生产的主力，但在排华法案期间，他们被禁止录用，最终被迫离开。直至今日，索诺玛县都少见华人面孔。这段苦痛的历史让 Leslie 现在在这里做的一切都更有意义。The people that the farm really resonate with are on a similar journey to me to reconnect.、Mm. I didn't know anything about any of these vegetables when I started、yeah. in 2019. How do you pronounce? 芹菜 Okay, that.、Mm. <laughs> yeah, my pronunciation is very bad. Leslie 边学习种菜边学习中文。事实上 ，Leslie 做农夫只有四年，从办公室的白领到面朝黄土背朝天，这样的转变是巨大的。My biggest goal was to expose my children to a lot of the vegetables on the farm because, you know, even though in one generation of immigration we lost the whole language,、mm-hmm. the culture, and the foods within my family,、um, I at least want them to be exposed to some of the vegetables. How do、yeah. they like it? It's okay, you、yeah. know. They love bok choy, but you know the kugwa and bitter melon. Oh, that's、like、hard for all child, kids. Then they don't、yeah. like it. My mother always tells me that.、Uh, The day you you start appreciating kugua, you know you're a true grown up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so do you like it? I do like、mm. it so much so I would just eat it raw.、Mm. Oh wow, <laughs> you're a, you're a very grown up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leslie 的祖父母是中国人。二战期间，他们逃到重庆，在那里爱上了川菜。战争迫使他们来到台湾，后至美国，但对川菜的思念却没有改变。
。在美国中西部长大的 Leslie 就常在家中吃到特别的麻辣味。花椒花耶！我从来没有吃过花椒花。哇、wow. ，Oh， I love it. It's so great. It's so fresh.、This. And I wasn't exactly sure what ma was,、mm. where it came from. So,、mm. but after investigating and asking my mom and my aunts and my uncles, I was able to track down a cutting. 在工业化的今天，快餐加工食物是人们在忙碌中的首选。这让现代人对食物和孕育食物的土地失去了情感。我很佩服 Leslie 透过种菜，跟他的家族历史，也跟这片土地重新产生连接。但农业这个靠天吃饭的行业，因为气候变化，变得更加难以预测。We're really on the forefront of climate change, and then this year we dealt with excessive rain. We're delayed because the ground is so wet. But one of the benefits of being a CSA farm, like people basically invest in the farm and they share the risk with the farmers. 社区支持农业最早出现在上世纪七零年代的瑞士和日本，之后推广到全球。人们提前缴纳费用，遵守契约，成为某个当地农场的股东，共同支持像 Leslie 这样的小型农场的运作。And it's really just like finding a farm that resonates with the people. So you know, a lot of our customers, children of immigrants, you know, they want the same path. They're learning just as I am. Leslie 农场的客户绝大多数是湾区的亚裔移民，也有不少当地的餐馆。Good to eat 台湾菜馆，他就常提起。这家店老板对于推广台湾味的执着和用心良苦，让我印象深刻。Happy Sunday! And we are like so, so, so excited. It is a lot of time, effort, and love. So、uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> 我恰巧赶上了 Good to Eat 每个月一次的 Tasting Menu 赏味套餐。这个月的主题是台湾传统半桌菜，票价嘛自然不菲，但常一抢而空。难得的机会可以坐下来好好享受盛宴。That is really to execute that kind of the banquet dishes. This really art of how to utilize ingredient different way, use different texture to create different flavor. Today we really really want to take you through that flavor journey. Let's start with the first round of the appetizer. 吃到这么经典的老派台菜。除了感动，我觉得真的是佩服你们的胆识。为了这个餐厅，就是开始这个 business， 我大概五年没有回家了。在这里我也找不到这样的味道，完全没有,没有办法找得到。台湾菜不是只有牛肉面，不是只有 night market 这么传统的食物，需要透过这么多的工序的食物，已经越来越少人做，真的非常的美。这个美，我可不可以在这里透过这个场域？
，让他在更优雅的呈现在外国人的面前。最后谢幕的时候，带着这所有的员工来一位一位介绍，那一幕真的让我差一点就热泪盈眶哦。从台湾到这边，其实都是一个移民环境，然后很多的文化、很多的种族不停不停的融合。我们一群很好的团队，他们家里真的都是移民的背景，然后他们觉得说就是要用这样的精神做移民事务，有这样子的力量。他们在 inspire 我们，就是觉得说我们就是要继续。勇敢地说自己的故事。十九世纪加州淘金潮，首批华人移民美国。往后历史一再想抹除华人的痕迹，但他们从未停止过对身份认同的抗争。今天在这片土地上，随处可见华人移民的遗产，中餐正是很好的见证。One of the best places to visit in America for modern Chinese food is the San Gabriel Valley in Los Angeles. I think I counted of the provinces in China, roughly 80% of those are represented in at least one restaurant in the San Gabriel Valley. So I was born and raised in San Gabriel Valley. 我来自中国的东北。我是从台湾来的，我在 San Gabriel Valley 住了差不多二十七年，差不多四年了。Uh, my favorite food to eat is 三煎包，砂锅鱼头和水煮鱼，大盘鸡还有羊肉串儿。Anything you want, you can get here。我不用花机票钱去台湾或中国，就可以吃到很地道的餐饮。圣盖博谷位于洛杉矶以东，美国最大的华人社区之一。近二十年间，荣升为美国中餐美食新圣地。So many restaurants in just one little plaza. Have you eaten in most of them? All of them. All of them. In fact, this plaza has been around close to 20 years. Maybe eight restaurant locations in the plaza. Over the 20 years, I've probably been at 30 different restaurants in this plaza. So you've seen ups and downs, the generations of restaurants. David Chan, 地道洛杉矶人，第三代华裔，数十年来尝遍各地中餐，致力于记录美国中餐馆的严格演进与背后人口组成。今天，他要带我去看圣盖博谷中餐的最新潮流。The food here is amazing. Everything is so delicious. What do you think about the meal? When Bistro now opened, I think it was in late 2016. In hindsight, that was a watershed moment for Chinese food in the San Gabriel Valley. 中国改革开放后，更多内地的留学生和投资移民来到美国，而几乎前所未见的北方菜肴也在美国遍地开枝散叶，像那家小馆一样。这些来自中国的中高级餐馆定位在华人聚集的社区，用精致的饭菜装潢，让 David 这样的老华裔眼睛一亮。I was born in Los Angeles in 1948. We're talking about an era where Chinese were a minority that was discriminated against. 早在 David 出生前，排华法案就被废除，但它的影响却远未停止。长达二十二年间。华人每年仅有一百零五人的移民定额，远少于欧裔移民。David 出生时，洛杉矶仅有五千个华人，而今天却有超过四十万华人居住在洛杉矶。What you ate at home growing up? We ate mostly ate American nice food. We'd go to Chinese banquet and I'd eat rice and soy sauce. 酱油炒饭、芙蓉蛋，像杂碎一样，也是华工时代的产物。廉价省时、吃得饱肚子的食物是铁路华工辛苦生活的写真。排华法案期间，美国几乎完全向华人移民关上大门，而美国仅有的华裔是华工们的后代，祖籍大多在广东台山。美国对中餐的全部想象，一个世纪以来就停留于此。When I was in high school, I remember my parents were looking to buy a new house, and we looked at this house. It was a nice house. After we left. The broker told us, "Don't consider making an offer in this house." Everybody on this block has banded together, and they agreed they will not sell to a non-white. 二十世纪上叶，受非裔美国人大迁徙运动影响，美国多地实行种族限制性契约
，禁止少数族裔居住在白人社群。洛杉矶就曾是住宅隔离的典型。一九四八年，联邦最高法院的判决为种族隔离打开缺口，但在民间，住房歧视仍存在了很久。多年后，圣盖博谷才开始有少数族裔居住。In my last quarter at UCLA, they、uh, gave the first class on Asian American studies, which, tellingly, it was called Orientals in America. And I was just totally fascinated to learn that Chinese Americans had their own history. David 上大学时，正值美国民权运动兴起。新移民法案也在一九六五年通过，华人每年移民定额上涨为两万人。那时美中尚未建交，港台是移民的主力。有华人房地产商宣传，圣盖博谷的主要城市蒙特利公园是华人的比佛利山庄，这吸引了大批移民的涌入。他们在圣盖博谷开酒楼，为今天的中餐新圣地打下基础。What was it like for you to try? All these different kinds of Chinese food. It was fantastic because、yeah. this was Chinese food that was delicious compared to the stuff which my mom occasionally cooked. <laughs> Whenever I traveled, I decided well, I need a Chinese restaurant because what better way to、right. see what it was like to be Chinese someplace in the Midwest or the South or back east? Absolutely, because、yeah. wherever there are Chinese people, there、yeah. are Chinese restaurants. Yeah. 至此 ，David 开始了自己的中餐之旅。作为税务律师 ，David 经常出差。每去一个城市，就去吃当地的中餐，并且记录下来。直至今天，他已经吃过了八千多家中餐馆，见证了美国中餐的起起伏伏。What this journey means to you? By mixing in Chinese food and demographic aspects, I reached the point where I'm able to communicate people, tell them things that what it used to be like, that showed how Chinese food. Change in the U.S. as the composition of the Chinese American community changed. Wow, we've come a long way, and、yeah. your personal history is a testament to all the changes、yeah. that happened to the Chinese diaspora community. Outside, for a week, I finally returned to my family. Hello. In this cultural rainbow, how to find your place? 很重要的一点是，知道我们从哪里来。祖传的饮食习惯和味觉记忆，从原料到烹饪，直至入口，一代又一代的华人透过它，寻找身份坐标，建立情感连结。这样的追寻，成了每个人长达一生的旅程。<笑>